the impact of involving patients into research. And today he will give us an insight into what patient involvement means. And he will also share some examples of how to implement this in research practice. And before we start, just a quick reminder, as in the sessions before, if you have any questions, please put them into the Q&A box. And after Mathieu's presentation, there will be some time for discussion. So very nice to have you here, Mathieu. Very nice to see you again online. And yeah, here you go. Thank you so much, Isabel, for this very nice introduction. Um, so hi, everyone. Yes, uh, my name is uh, yeah. Mathieu, as you know now. And I think I will just start sharing my presentation and just go right into it. So uh, let me just do this. OK. And like this. So now you should see the full screen. Um, so yes, yeah, so, uh, today I will just give you a very brief overview about what patient involvement in research means and also a little bit, yeah, what we do here at the Open Innovation and Science Center of the Ludwig Boltzmann Gesellschaft. So let me just briefly introduce you uh, to our center. Um, so our center is part of the LBG and it was founded in 2016 and our aim is to foster open and collaborative practices in research. So that means opening up the uh, research process, inviting other stakeholders as well, and really um, just profiting from a fruitful exchange between research and non-research, really to, um, to just have more applicable results, for example. So um, we have two teams, the implementation and the research team. I will just give you a very brief overview. Um, so we are here, or I'm part, for example, of the implementation team, uh, where it's really about, OK, how can we really bring this uh, into different uh, research projects like the involvement aspect and these open practices in research. And so we have different categories. Um, so for example, priority setting, which is really about the research question, which is the beginning of a research project usually where you frame what you want to find out. And so for example, here um, we give uh, consultation and trainings as well on to how to involve patients already at this very crucial stage in order to set a research question, which is called priority setting. Then, of course, um, just the um, like patient and public involvement aspect of it, really like during implementation of the project. Um, and also then the, the capability aspect, because involving uh, or like working together with researchers and non-researchers requires some skills, which are not necessarily, for example, taught in universities or in normal courses. So we want to provide training for researchers for exactly these kinds of um, practices. And then this is my part, which I will not talk about today, which is the impact part. So what is the impact? What are the benefits of uh, involving patients, for example, into research? And since this year, we started a new program, which is the ethics program, uh, because we think it's very important to also have the ethical considerations of involving patients. For example, like on, um, how to pay them, but there is also like, and not, not how to like just use them and abuse of them, but really have this like uh, fruitful and ethical exchange. And then there's also the research team, uh, which really does like um, basic research on what the conditions are of these open and collaborative practices um, so that they can really be fruitful and how they work. And so this is like just some insight into our center. Um, but now I will just go straight into like the patient involvement aspect. So it's uh, this part, especially. Um, so what is patient involvement, right? Or what do we mean by it sometimes? Or like we also call it PPIE. So if you ever hear this acronym, just know that it means patient and public involvement and engagement. Um, but just, just on a very conceptual level, it's not only, you know, doing something for patients or for affected groups but also doing it with them so that they really, you know, are involved into the research practice. Because usually if you think about it, um, how, does a, how, how does a research project, for example, can be created is you look at what other researchers have done in the literature, you identify a gap in this literature, and then, you know, you're saying, like, okay, this is something that we need to discuss. But then our approach is to say, this is good. We need also like the literature review, but also we should, you know, just ask, and involve the people who will be affected by a certain research. And here I also included what the NIHR says, the Nas National Institute of Health Research in the United Kingdom. So user or public and patient involvement in research 
means doing research with patients and the public so that they are not just participants in the research. I will come to that in a second. And this requires users to have a say in the decisions made about research uh, so that the methods and outcomes are more appropriate to research participants and patients. So ha this having a say in the decisions is also very important since they will be affected by, by the outcomes of the research. Um, so. I mean, I'm, I'm already, of course, uh, just always insinuating why it is important. I just want to emphasize this again uh, for researchers and for patients. Of course, there are benefits into doing like patient and, um, and uh, involvement. So, for example, for researchers, it's really of like what I just said, identifying the most socially relevant problems. If they are doing like, for example, research, which is going to be applied, then, of course, involving the patients mean usually that the research will be more effective because you really also include their views, their opinions, and you know, um, well, and their lived experiences. And also, this is also just very important, this better understanding of uh, patients' needs and lived experience. So basically, it's not just uh, you're doing research somewhere, and then maybe you do a questionnaire and the patients fill them out. But it's really also about understanding what they have to live with and go through, and how this maybe will affect on how you design your research as well. Uh, but also for patients, of course, there are benefits into participating in research. As I already said, it's this, um, you know, like having a say in development that will affect them so that they can also co-decide, um, you know, like uh, things that could change, for example, or alter a little bit like their, their lives or their conditions. Um, for them, it also means that they will gain research skills and scientific literacy. So um, by participating in research and becoming co-research, essentially, they will also gain appreciation of the research process and just better also understand how maybe certain research is being then formulated into something that the patient will use. And also a very important aspect is that they can be recognized as experts of their own experience. So of course, Researchers have the expertise of doing research and of really finding out new things, but patients have the expertise of just living with the condition and knowing their experiences and how it can be implemented and integrated into their lives. And so this expertise needs to be valued and it is valued if they are being involved in research. Um, so before in the definition of the National Institute of Health Research, it said, uh, that involvement means that patients are not just participants. And I just want to briefly give you an overview of different modes, which are based on the model of this institute in the UK, where basically participation just means that citizens or patients take part in research studies by, for example, just filling out a questionnaire or being recruited for a clinical trial, but not really having any, any say into the design of the research. Then there is also engagement, which is also part of the PPIE acronym, the E part, um, which in this model means basically it's information about, you know, like the knowledge which is being created and which is provided and disseminated to the patients. So, for example, through science festivals or through science cafes, there's different formats, but also even through blogs, for example, and media. And then there is the involvement aspect here, which really means and which is different to the participation aspect in the sense that they are being actively involved in research as co-researchers, or there is even other possibilities. They can write grants together with the researchers. They can be member of some advisory board to consult the project at regular intervals. Um, so yeah, and here you have the link if you want to read more uh, on these different uh, levels or like modes of PPIE. Uh, and then also, I just want to give a briefly um, still theoretical overview of different degrees of involvement, because what does it really mean, like, you know, to involve and how can we categorize that? Because that can be very, um, that can be very useful, you know, when, for example, you're planning uh, some kind of uh, involvement activity. And so there is something called Arnstein's ladder. Uh, and so we adapted it uh, for our center. Um, so this is not the graph, which is based, uh, which is in the original paper, but something that we have in our guide um, on patient involvement and research. And so basically you can see it goes from the left in form, which is not really involvement at all, but it's just about, okay, uh, what we also like called engagement before, just about spreading and disseminating the knowledge to the patients without them having a say, going over to consulting. So basically you as a researcher, you want to have feedback that you might integrate into the design so that you consult, for example, the patients. Then you have really like what is here called in this ladder, the 
involvement. So you as a researcher decide to involve the patients so that they can really um, co-design elements of the research and really be there while it's being designed. Then the next step here is the collaboration aspect, which is involvement is still you from the researcher's perspective, decide to involve someone. Collaboration is you are already like on the exact like same level that you decide together really everything and how you design the research. And then we can even go even further, right? Where it's not research led, right? But it's really patient led. So the patient takes the lead on, you know, like really what is supposed to be designed and they involve, for example, researchers. So this is just to give you an overview of like different degrees of involvement and where you can see on the one end when we go towards lead, it's really the empowerment of the affected people who just uh, increases. Uh, and from a researcher's perspective, however, if we go to this lead thing, it means a decrease of the control and content that you have. If you just inform the patients, you mean you have full control of the content that you create and then you just disseminate it. However, if it's the opposite, right? Uh, if the patient leads, it means that you will have way less control of the content, of course. But this is something that is very crucial uh, to um, involvement practices, to have this shared power of decisions. Um, and then about the timeline also, um, you know, just saying like how much time I've left. Okay. Uh, what I want to really say here as well is, for example, if we have this research cycle, really on like classic research, where there's a research question being designed, the study um, like being designed, then data being collected, analyzed, written up and disseminated, right? At every stage, involvement can happen. It doesn't mean that it has to happen at every stage, but it can basically, right? So the first thing is really like the priority setting, which I already talked about, uh, where it's very important really from the start because this will set up the, the next processes. But there's also the possibility of them really to become co-researchers, and collect the data and interpret the data and also to be part of the dissemination, not only into the academic field, but also into their uh, circles, for example, which can also be very valuable if you want to have a wider uh, audience and applicability of, the, of your findings, right? Um, and so this is just saying that you don't have to involve everyone at every time, but just be aware when it would be important to involve and for what reason. And also coming back to here, what degree of involvement you want to do. Um, so now let's go to some examples because this was all very theoretical. So I just want to give you two project examples, but we have way more um, project examples on the Open Innovation and Science Center website. So then in the further resources, you can uh, have the link. Um, but for example, here, this is about like a project on chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, which has now been more in the news because it's one of the manifestations of long COVID, but it's still very, very much understudied. And so basically, yeah, there's only a few specialized physicians who are able to diagnose CSF, and it takes a long, long year to really, you know, just have the diagnosis of the disease. And so in this project, patient, uh, patients and family members as well were active co-researchers, right, right next to the, to the physicians and to the researchers. And also family members were a very important part here because if you have chronic fatigue syndrome and you are only um, like active really during two hours of the day because otherwise you're fatigued, it really means that you know, the family members could here have uh, provide a valuable help uh, into this kind of research. And so what they wanted to do is they wanted to um, so collect information on the disease, right? But also to create a questionnaire to diagnose the disease where patients and family members were involved as well into the creation of how this questionnaire should look. So it's not just that the researchers had a questionnaire and then other patients that they recruited filled it out, but really the creation of the questionnaire itself and how this disease should be diagnosed was co-created with the patients and the family members. And, and so basically the goal was of course that patients should reach um, a diagnosis and appropriate therapies more quickly. And a second example that I want to present here as well is um, Young Stars 1. So the one is referring to the type 1 diabetes, which is a very complex disease, especially like for young adults. And so, for example, here they involved teenagers having this condition of type 1 diabetes into their projects, right? So the objectives were um, to yeah, adapt diabetes care to the realities of young adults, right? Uh, to identify novel research questions and also yeah, to improve 
and develop new support services. And so what did they do, like um, the, the teenagers, right? They actually collected the data. So they were part of the data collection, but also of the data analysis, right? So they really gained like a lot of um, research skills doing that, but not only did they do that, but then with the findings of the analysis together with the researchers, they formulated an action plan on where care can be improved. And then they should, and then the, the goal now is to, and they're at the stage of the process now to co communicate this action plan to decision makers, right? Um, yeah, but as I said, there is also like a lot of other projects um, that you can get inspired of. So just some advice uh, for implementation, uh, just in general, if you want to do, for example, a PPA project. Oh yeah, okay, this was switched up, but yeah, consult so our guide, of course, and get inspired by other PPA projects. I think I've emphasized this enough. I think again, if you involve patients, clarify each other's needs, expectations, and roles from the start. This is very important, really to see, okay, what are the needs of the researchers? What are the needs of the patients? Uh, what are the expectations, you know, of, for example, several outcomes of the research? And also, you know, how do you want to divide up the tasks and the work and who is responsible for what? Um, just preset dates to meet each other regularly, to keep each other at least informed, you know, for every step of the, the project, right? I think this is just very important to have this very continuous uh, information exchange. And so, yeah, basically patients can um, just co-design elements of the research or the idea together. So even if the implementation is up to the researcher, really the design of what is supposed to be the outcome should definitely like be co-created, right? So that you can orient it towards the needs also of the patients or of the affected groups who are supposed to profit from the research. Um, so communication is key. I think um, this is very central. I didn't really talk about it that much, but of course, maybe there's different languages. And so don't be afraid to ask again from if something is unclear. This is especially true for patients, um, but also maybe sometimes for researchers to create a common language. And um, yeah, so for example, if you're preparing something, just co-design it and co-lead co it like a presentation because you are a team, right? The patients and the experts basically like together, you are working together to create something together. Um, and yeah, everyone has their expertise. As I said, you have, or like as a researcher, there is the expertise of doing research, generating knowledge and, uh, you know, on how to get there. But also the patients, again, have their expertise on, you know, like what it is like to have that condition. So use these expertise together to really create something fruitful. And so for the further resources, there is our guide um, on uh, PPIE for researchers. There's also a guide of the uh, National Institute for Health Research that I mentioned before, uh, the database for the projects uh, which use um, open innovation in science. And also, and if you want to have some more academic literature and want to dig more into the academic discussion, there's this database, the literature database of the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute and also literature review by uh, Greenhouse et al. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for your attention. And if you have any questions, then yes, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Mathieu, for putting this uh, great topic into a mini nutshell for us. And uh, now let's open the floor for some Q&A. So far, there are no questions in the chat, so please feel free to do so 